first of all, thanks for inviting me along to have a go and do this uh, demo. Let me just, I'll leave my camera off now and I'll put it on for the questions at the end. Um, okay, so my name's Ben Child. I've been, my business is GJ Stats. I've been building applications with Alpha for far too long, for long as I care to remember. Um, but let me just jump straight in and show you an application. Uh, this application I'm going to demo is currently in soft testing. Uh, we've got a full launch scheduled for the end of this month um and it's rather topical so it's all around this bad boy uh covid19 uh the coronavirus pandemic um just a quick little bit of background uh the here in the uk back in march we entered a full lockdown and the government at that point were really concerned about the impact of too many people having to go into hospital going into intensive care and swamping out the National Health Service. So they identified with the help of the National Health Service, some two million people over here who they considered to be at high risk um, and vulnerable to the effects of COVID-19. By that I mean people of a particular age group or people with underlying health conditions that would mean that if they did contract it, they almost certainly would end up in hospital and most likely in intensive care. So they asked those two million odd people to shield and by that I mean they ask him to stay home, don't go out, if somebody else goes and gets a shop in their medication, whatever else, restrict contact with other people to make sure that they didn't get or contract COVID-19. Um, but to do that, they also knew that they had to get a, a volunteer army up together to help help these people to be able to go and do their shopping, go and pick up their medication, even just give them a friendly call every so often just to make sure that they were were okay um, and they tasked local government authorities to manage this support and one of those local government authorities was the Royal Borough of Windsor and Maidenhead. Uh, it's the Royal Borough because there are royal um, castles on there and royal family but um, but in essence it's, an, it's a borough just to the west of London and went into discussion with them and what happened was we on the 24th of May, and I would note that date, um, an initial requirements document was, was provided to me, which was effectively to say they wanted to manage the interactions between the vulnerable individuals, the volunteers and the staff within the borough throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. And bearing in mind at that point, they were managing on spreadsheets. They were getting two or three spreadsheets a day from the government, giving them a list of everybody in their area that uh, potentially was asked to shield. And that was being updated two or three times a day. So you can just well imagine with probably about 4,000 people on there changing daily, an absolute nightmare to manage. So they kind of said, we need to do something and we need to do something quickly. So they asked us to create, or asked me to create a desktop based application, browser based for the staff to manage the whole system. They wanted a volunteer sign up form, which is going to be linked to their, their website so that people can sign up to, to be volunteers. Also, a, a get help form so that people could um, request help online. Uh, they wanted to create a digital style form for the volunteer task so the volunteers would have on their, on their uh, smartphones um, pushed out to them the request to go and do whatever it is they're asked to do. They also wanted to create separate applications for training, for demonstration purposes and for development purposes. And the other thing they wanted to do is allow the community group administrators. So they, they have the community groups as in the local religious groups, the local social groups, the local groups that may look after a particular need or area of concern. Um, the authorised access to the system so that they can see their volunteers within their group and manage them directly so it really has become a bit of a community thing so what was agreed was that we would go down this road with a development platform and the development platform being alpha anywhere at the core of it but also using alpha transform alpha cloud we're using sql service the back end and navicat is uh for what of a better description my weapon of choice for managing updated administering the sql server back end database the structure in place is that from the Alpha Anywhere dev, the IDE, we push up to Alpha Cloud 
and from Alpha Cloud, that goes and that pushes up to the staging platform only. That's the only one that the IDE talks to. And then from within the Alpha Cloud environment, uh, we then have other um, deployments for live, for training, and for demo. So it's the demo version I'm going to show now. It has no live data on there. I would probably um, have the most expensive fine ever if I put any live demo out on here, uh, live data out on here now. <laughs> But I'm using, uh, I'm going to show the demo version now with some dummy data in there. Um, I've got a commitment to proceed on the 29th of May. They are currently in the process of training up uh, the community administrators and the internal staff on how to use the system. And we're working up to the point where they want to be in a position to be able to go live on the 1st of November, and we are on track to do that. So. With that in mind, I'm now going to switch over to uh, get to it, the application. So can you see the application on screen, Dave? Um, let me take a look. Sorry, I'm having an issue with my thing. Yeah, 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 it's coming through. The line 2.0 okay, sign cool. in, thanks. Right, so if you want to ask me what question, why it's called Leon 2.0, then that would be one for the quick Q&A if we've got time. It's quite funny actually but the actual application itself the the login page um which is the same across all four instances knows which instance you're on so we've got it set up so it will show demo it will show uh staging it will show uh training uh, it won't show live it would just be with that that at all if it was live so i know with some comfort that i'm actually on the demo version so if i log into it now we do have two-factor authentication turned on for users, but not for me, because um, I'm in and out of it so often at the minute whilst we test it. So what I'm going to start off doing is I'm going to show um, a, a use case that's used on here. Um, by that, I mean what would actually be um, how it would be used uh, in a particular environment. So the first thing I'm going to do is imagine the scenario where um, we have a um, somebody phones in, a vulnerable person phones in and says, I need help. I've, I need to get my medication for the pharmacy. It's there, but I can't get out because I'm shielded. Please, could somebody go and collect it for me? So you might go into the contact system where all the contacts, volunteers, um, vulnerable people and the organizations are on. And I'm going to look at this guy. And there's some guy called McCormick. Um, oh, uh -oh. I've got two on him. Dave McCormick and a Dion McCormick. No relation. Uh, no relation. Really. But so it's Dave that's phoned in. So I'm going to go into Dave's record. And in here, I can see some information about Dave. I can see that he was actually put on the list by the government. He's active, i.e. Um, he's not refused help and he's not actually passed away. Um, so he's, it's an active person that he's looking after. I can see we have permission to phone him, to post and send that post and email. And here's some information about him. He lives at Transformation House in, in the village where I'm actually living now. Um, and I can see some key information that came in from the government. And it's um, it's labeled, uh, it's, the color encoding is labeled based on whether or not there is a need there. So it's actually, um, it references. So does he have essential supplies? No, he doesn't. It's, does he have any di dietary requirements? No, he doesn't, so it's not a problem. Are his basic care needs met? Nope. And does he carry supplies? No, he doesn't. I can see a map here where he lives, and I can expand on that. And I can see a task list of, and this is some migrated data in here. So what I'm going to do here now is just go in and create a new activity. So the activity is, it's today's date, um, and we've had a phone call. Um, needs meds picking up. Uh, it must be the stress of what he's been doing over the last three days, I think. But, uh, <laughs> um, so it needs to be picked up today and I'm going to allocate this to a volunteer and, it, and I'm going to be the volunteer here for the purpose of this. Um, so please collect um, medications, if I could type, uh, pharmacy uh, call first to confirm. So here we go, we're putting a record in there with an activity record. Anybody on the list that's got the, uh, access to the app 
is on here so I can assign myself and I've got a creative form. It may not necessarily be a form that needs to be created. It might be that actually it's somebody within the team, within the borough might need to make a phone call to him, in which case then it will be a task, but not requiring a digital form. So if I save that, that's now saved and you can see it's now appeared at the top of the, the activity list. It's a phone call and these must pick it up and there's a red alarm bell there to say it's a task which has not yet been completed. So what I'm now going to do is bring over if the technology works. Uh, my, this is a, uh, my phone and I've logged into the app already. So if I go and refresh this now, tapping that button at the top, the forms come out to me. There will be also be an SMS text message would have gone out to the volunteer to say, you've got, you've got a task to do. So you can see on here now, I've got an open task, which is a support request. I haven't read it yet. It's generated today. Um, I'm the volunteer and I'm helping Dave McCormick. So tap on it. And the first thing you see, it just confirms that it's me. But I can see the individual with the address and I can view the location. It's a button here. So I can go and open up in Google now and say, OK, that's where he is. He's about a mile away from where I physically am now. And I can use all the themes within Chrome that you've got, like go for directions, everything else. But I know where it is. So I just tap down at the bottom to go back to the app. And I've got two phone numbers. If you look over here, you can see that there's two phone numbers in the system. Um, and there could be up to four. So there could be as many as four buttons here based on what it is. But if I tap on that, it will then open up the the phone device. Now, it's, it's hard coded at the minute to my business line purely to stop any accidents happening with accidentally phoning people that were tested. But if I was to tap that now, then I would call my phone line. But you can see it's also brought in please collect medications from pharm pharmacy, call first, confirm. Um, so I can now say, am I going to do this or not? Am um, I going to say, yes, I am proceeding with it? Because it might be that if I said no, I'm going to be asked, why not? It could be that I can't, the car's broken down, whatever it is, I can't do it. And therefore, it will get allocated to somebody else. But I say yes. And this form is deliberately kept as simple as possible. We don't want to burden the volunteers with too much data entry. It's simply about getting them out to do whatever it is we're asking to do. So did they complete it? Yes, they did. So I put a completion date on there, which is now. And I can put completing notes as well. Uh, but also there is a thing here called a follow up. So it might be I've gone to pick up days meds from the for the pharmacy. I've gone back to it and he said, thank you very much. Do you mind picking up my shopping tomorrow, please? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've run out of stuff that I need. I can't obviously you can't go out. So you might have said, yeah, I'll do that. So there is a follow up required. And the follow up here, you can put in whatever you want, but I'm going to just say collect shopping, one of the pre field options. And it needs to be done tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Let's try that again. And I'm going to put some notes on there. Um, so it needs um, shopping picked up from supermarket. Now, you can, if I can spell, um, you can see down the bottom, if you've got access to the microphone on your uh, device, which Transform will be given permission to do so, you could then dictate that in if you wanted to. So if you're not particularly good at typing like me, then you could actually dictate it. Trouble is for my accent, it may not pick you up that well. But uh, OK, so that's done. So the last question on here is assign the follow-up task to me question mark. So um, and it's a mandatory field because it's there's a red star against it. Um, and it, so do I want to do this or can I say no? Somebody asked me to do it, but I'm going to say yes. And there, there's something a little wrinkle on here, which I'll explain. So I submit the form now, I upload it. That's gone. So let's just move this out of the way again. So if I just now refresh this now you'll see that the phone call task has now been cleared. It's been marked as done. If I go into it, um, you'll see that it'll actually show you know, the action has been completed. But also a new follow-up task has been added in here now, and it's an open task. Um, but it hasn't been assigned to me automatically, and that's the debate that's going on with, with me and the Barrett Minute, because there's an argument to say they, 
they want to have some checks and balances in place so that they actually want to see this and then approve the fact that it's going to get assigned back to me. So if they did choose to assign it, they would come back into here, select me, create the form, and then that would, that, would, that would push the form out again. So for now, we've now got this task in here. The other thing I'm going to show on here, though, is uh, bring that back over again, is that as we've kind of figured out that even though most forms, you know, we can push a form out to an individual volunteer, the most common scenario is going to be that a community group who are linked uh, to multiple volunteers would want to push it out so that everybody within their organization has the access to maybe go and do it. So have some like a dispatch facility, which Transform Course has got. So if I go into the burger bar at the top here, here's um, what I prepared earlier, and I click on claim forms, which is here, that will then make a call back to the server. So you have to be online. And there's unassigned forms here in a queue. So I tap on that. I can see that there are two forms on here, which have been opened up, but not actually done. There's one for Joe DiMaggio. I think you play with a little white ball. Uh, oh, Dion. So I'm going to tap and say, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll look after Dion. So I, I tap on it, and it now says claim. And I can tap down the bottom and say to submit that claim. So I want to go and grab it. And it's first come, first served. So if you've got 40 volunteers, first one to push that back up, we'll get, the, we'll get it. So it's been granted. So I can now grab the form. So I'm putting that back down. So I now have that form on my device and it's disappeared, disappeared from the claim list. And it's back, sorry, disappeared from case is back on my main sheet now is actually uh, a form. So if I open that up now, I can see here he is. He's on a different place here. Oh, and he needs urgent help because he's run out of beer. Yeah. So um, I won't go through the process again, but now I can handle that 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 claim as well, or that task as well, sorry. So that's kind of demoed also the queuing system and the dispatch system, which is really quite easily built into, into uh, Transform now with Alpha Anywhere. Uh, the other things on here to quickly go through then are, um, within the contact view, there's a bit more information on here. You can see there's a map here. There's also a couple of other things. There's a, a show mapping, which is only available for active, uh, active vulnerable people. If I open that up, it brings in the map. And what it's showing here is, um, if I hover over it, that's where Dave's living. And here's all the, um, the, the, the volunteers around the area. And we've got a lot. We've got some guy called Scott Allen. Uh, that's me. Um, who's this? Uh, Bob Moore's on there. Um, Greg's on here. I think even at some point there. Uh, yeah, that's Selwyn. I won't, if I go into Street View, that's Lonely House, which is a stately home. So I thought it appropriate that for the, for the data we put Selwyn in a stately home. Um, this is going to be developed further so that we can click on here and actually push out tasks from here. But, it's kind of been superseded by the, the group requirement at the minute. If I go back to the contact list and clear that filter, look at uh, a couple of the, uh, the groups functions on here. So group on here, um, haven't got uh, data, it's, it's a bit unclear, but we've got a connections option. So if I open that up, I can see all the people connected to that group. So all the volunteers, all the vulnerable people, um, that are collected and they can jump straight through from here and go to their record. Yeah. So, so if I'm now going to look at Nikos, um, because he's a volunteer, I can see volunteer information which is collected when the form was grabbed in the first place. And these are the questions get asked on the form. So we've got information there. Um, but if I go to his connections, I'll see he's just connected to the support group. The other things on here, the government data list, which is not in the demo, demo, I haven't got it in here for obvious reasons, but the spreadsheet import routine, which took them so long to try and manage and, and administer. How it works now is you import the data from a spreadsheet into here. And this screen has two list controls on it. One of them is hidden, and that's the actual data table for the imported data. So I'm just using what Alpha gives me as far as importing from a spreadsheet into a list control, something into the table. 
And this one here, if it was shown anything, would be the view. And the view is um, basically grouping all those records. So it's showing one record per unique ID, which is the National Health Service number that's used, the latest contact, whether they're in the database or not. If they aren't, pressing this button then automatically puts them into the system and generates what's called a well-being task. So on that basis here, if I go back to the main menu and go to the well-being checklist, there is a daily routine that goes on every day um, where anybody that hasn't been contacted for at least 15 days would appear on this list if they're an active, vulnerable person. Anybody who's deemed as high priority appears at the top. That's what that denotes. And from here, they can be, they can select a member of staff and say, OK, allocate. If I if I pick some of these now, allocate them to this person, and they would then automatically generate what's called a well-being phone call task, so that that person then would get a phone call that day, just to check out, make sure they're okay, any problems, any issues, and uh, whatever else off the back of it. So that's a way, and they are still doing that now, even though we're not currently in a full lockdown, and people are not being asked to shield at the minute. We have a lot of people still voluntarily shielding, so they are still doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. And the last one on here I'm going to show is the open task part of it, which is a list of all the open tasks. So you can see um, there's the three on here, which is the two that were in the queue, which still ha haven't been completed. So they're, they've been assigned to the alpha group. And then the one that I regenerated to go for the supermarket shopping tomorrow for Dave. So we've gone from the concept in 25th of May to pretty well ready to launch at the end of this month so the client's pretty happy i'm pretty happy we've managed to achieve it um and a lot of that's down to keeping it as basic and using what alpha has given me in the id to manage okay so that's my presentation dave that is fantastic glenn thanks very much for showing it do we have questions here in the audience for either for glenn or for Hami? for um and if so we can take them you're getting some praise here in the questions box. That's always good. Um, I'll give a minute or so for people to have questions. Okay, so the one question I have is, how did you add the exit icon on the header of the tabbed UI? Right. Um, it's show, uh, my screen still being shared? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I still see the login screen. Right, okay, um, that literally is, if I log back in again, um, so I reference to this exit tab up here, yeah. Um, within the tab UI, and it's clearly using the tab UI. Um, and have I got, uh, what I didn't open up beforehand was the actual, uh, ID. So let me just open up the ID quickly. Um, sure. Right, it's coming in. Um, it's using um, within the actual uh, design. I the, the, I'm actually placing that into a an A5W page, and I'm waiting for this to show up. So it's sure just loaded in there. While we're waiting um, for the IDE to load, can I ask you another question? Which is, yeah, sure. okay, uh, why did you decide to use Transform as part of this application? Client did. The client did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and a, the re, a real reason for this is because um, we could have developed that in house, we could have done a um, uh, bespoke, you know, mobile friendly within the actual application itself, but um, with so much to do in such a short space of time. It's the, the speed and the build speed of Transform and the way I can quickly integrate it in to Alpha and the, and the tools that are there made it in much better sense. There's over 700 people going to be using this form. And there's a second reason as well is because this isn't just about the COVID-19 pandemic. They are using this as the base for their whole care in the community package moving on so there's a whole bunch of other forms and other things coming on board down the road and again it's using what's there to to speed up that build um capability if anybody here is from the uk they'll know full well that local authority local governments do not move quickly so it's just <laughs> been everywhere yeah <laughs> 
this has been a light speed development uh just with regards um getting this out out of the door <laughs> um Fantastic. so this is the tui header so I've, mm -hmm. in the header i've got um uh, i'm picking up the location but i'm also there's a bit of css in there mm -hmm. um but actually um where is it uh I've literally got it here that it's uh, it's an image file oh, and I'm re and I'm referencing the logout.a5w page there. So it's just that's the image, that's the, the code for specifically logging out of the application. So it just clears all the sessions and takes you and back I've, to the logout. And I've seen that technique before where, where it takes you to the logout page, but the logout page is what actually performs the logout operation. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, hey, speaking of log, log in and log out, someone asked, is the login page for the COVID app, is that also an A5W page? No, it's a, it's a um, it's wrapped around an index.a5w page, which is that one there, uh -huh. but it's actually, it's actually a web component, uh, and uh -huh. I call it index. Um, so what this one is doing is using the UX technique for logging in. So if I go to the controls, it's using panel layouts to get it right into this is splash screen on the left hand side and then the login so we've got two-factor authentication built in even though i'm not using it um yeah. they also uh, so within here um we're using the uh this there's uh, basic sorry it's server side going in so on the on dialogue initialize i'm picking up this is where i'm loading in stuff to actually assess what instance we're on whether it's the training the demo the live or the staging to put that text up there um but then it's just using on the on the on login event uh, on the server side it's then checking to make sure we've got a valid login then it's picking up some stuff and then it's writing it to a, an access log table um it's updating the web users to to the last login date so it's doing that and then it's taking to the home page so it's all built into a single ux component also built into that which i can quickly demo if i pull up the live because i won't be able to get into it uh there is a capability for to do that i can i can turn off the light so to speak and block people from getting in and that's gotcha. all built into that single and that's just a single setting on a table that gets referenced when you first initialize this page to see okay are we allowing people in today and I can put that up and stop and get into the actual uh, blogging. So, excellent. Um, I've got a couple questions still for for Jaime. Uh, if you're still there, uh, I know we're keeping you up late there <laughs> in Israel. Uh, but if you are there, if you could come back online, that would be great. Just two quick ones. And if I see you come off mute, I'll know to talk to you. If not, I'll move on to the next one. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to ask this question then uh, back to Glenn. Glenn. Glenn, why did you choose this, choose to use like a tabbed UI rather than panels? Uh, the tabbed UI is the, everything inside the tabbed UI is panels, but yeah. I'm using the tabbed UI because again, speed of build. It's yeah. using the expanded menu option, um, and also the use case for the interface is office band it's it's the the staff that are either on their laptops working from home or in the office so there's not a mobile need specifically for this part of the system you've got to like probably somewhere around 50 or 60 people using this application when it goes live mm -hmm. uh, but you've got something like 700 volunteers out there picking up and they're the ones who get the digital forms they're the people who get the transform application on yeah. their phones, right? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So I guess back to the transform thing, one nice thing is transform's already out in the app store. So that's one fewer hoop that you need to jump through. Uh, when you yeah, they are, they, are currently building, uh, they are currently building training documentation. They've started documentation in-house and they are going to provide you with um, the, 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 the topics, the subjects, or the, the detail to put into the, the help file, which is built into the system as well. So they're going to flesh out the details of that. But there's a built-in help file here, which we can um, put on information. It will be how-tos on here. The only how-to won't be on here is how to log in, because obviously you've got to be logged in to see it. <laughs> <laughs> how to log in. Do what you just did is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, all right, here's a great question. Uh, so you have the ability to import data from a spreadsheet. And when the user is importing data, how do you avoid issues with invalid dates, numbers that are characters or things like that? Do you do data checking on that? Or how does that go? How do you go about doing that? Um, at the minute, it's partly, they are quite spreadsheet proficient in the in the barrier. So they know that they've got to have the columns, the, the, the columns have to be done, but I've done, through the uh, through initially caching up, I did do some validation on there, um, oh. and it's on the. Uh, but not a great amount. I've had relied on them to to do it. So, the the controls on here. This is the actual control. So we've got um, the search functions. Um, we've then got uh, a hidden import list which is based on the actual data table. So that's the import one, um, and which is just based on uh, a, a table, which is actually MVARCAR. Everything on there is text. Hmm. There isn't, uh, so the, the magic happens then in the XBASIC function where, which is the, um, if I remember where I put it. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I've got a prepared data function. I'm uh, not even using that actually, so it's creating contacts. Where am I doing that now? I think I just put it in. Ah, it's uh -huh. done. I don't have to do anything. Sorry, I forget that because it's all done in SQL. Oh, okay. On the view. So the I view see. translates it. So gotcha. what, yep. what the view is doing is translating that data. So I've had to do the like the bug fix, if you like, in there. Um, so when it comes in, it views the data and then when um this create contacts happens it then goes through and translates the data that's in there to the correct format for the for the contact table gotcha so it goes spreadsheet into sql and then sql back to you and sql takes care of the fact that you know yeah. there might be a space in front of a number or a date isn't quite right or something like that yeah cool yeah, yeah. um so it's kind of and the point with that is that the um it takes away it's just it gets it into a, a plain table with with every column is just literally i think it's mvar car 255 or seven are actually mvar car max because yeah, there's more data in there so okay. um so once you've got the data into that single table then we can manipulate it using sql yeah perfect yeah that makes sense um so it, you got this built in absolute record time uh in terms of the time that you spend on the different parts of it how much time did you spend on the transform part of it versus say the alpha anywhere part of it? Uh, building the app, building the, um, the building the script to be able to push it out there and pushing and building the web hook to bring it back in again. It's about three days. Okay. And then the most next... of that was the scripting in and out. The actual app itself took okay. a couple yeah, of hours. Sure. Yeah. To do the transform form that's behind it didn't take particularly long yeah. is what it sounds like yeah yeah great um let's see what else we've got for questions if anyone wants to sneak another one in here we've got two minutes um let's see what i've got yeah here's a question for you uh, again people really kind of like that that login page the a5w page they're wondering what, did you use some sort of uh, web framework or something like that when you built it or how did you put that screen together that, that's literally this page. It's using panel layouts, panel cards. And that's it. Okay. That's it. So you're just using, that. using alpha. Okay. Yeah. So the key thing there is using some of the containers to use um, Flexbox that's built in to get the alignment right. Um, but it's just it's just using, it's completely within alpha. Yeah. yeah. Are you using, uh, uh, one final question, are you using both grids and UXs or pretty much just UXs in this? Not a grid in sight. Not a great insight. Okay, <laughs> that answers that. Great. Well, that comes to the end of our hour. Listen, uh, Glenn, thank you so much for presenting. Jaime, thank you so much for presenting. Thanks everyone who showed up and asked questions. Really very much appreciate it.